Let's take a look at these RFID readers and tags, and get a little demo up and running. You have no clearance. These reader modules are based on the NXP MFRC522 chip. They can connect to an Arduino using SPI, they run at 3.3 volts, and they can read these MyFair 1 kilobyte tags or cards. Inside the tag or card, there's an antenna, which is basically a coil of wire, and each end of the coil is connected to a microchip. Then when the RFID tag or card is brought near the RFID reader, which also has an antenna on it, they interact, the tag derives power from the RF energy, and two-way communication can occur. When the antenna in the tag is close enough to the RFID reader, and it picks up RF energy, it can rectify this and store the voltage in a capacitor enough to power the IC in the tag. Then data can be demodulated and decoded in the IC, and the IC can modulate this RF signal to transmit data back out. So when the tag comes near the reader antenna, the tag gets powered, the reader can then communicate with the tag, read out the info, or write to its 1K data space. With this RFID reader module, the RC522 chip interfaces with these MyFair 1K data cards or tags, and it runs at 13.56 MHz. The reader is designed to run at a maximum of 3.3 volts nominal supply. We're connecting it to an Arduino with SPI, and when we look at the absolute maximum limiting values, our 3.3 volt supply definitely shouldn't exceed 4 volts, and input pins should not exceed the power supply plus half a volt. So the SPI pins, according to this, would not be 5 volt tolerant for any inputs to this RFID reader, and they would need to be level translated. Looking at the RFID tag or card side, here's an example of the MyFair 1K data cards. Here's the card with the IC and the antenna, picking up energy to derive a power source and communicating both directions with the 1K data space E squared prom. The cards in this system have a 4 byte NUID. That's non unique identifier because you can only have so many. IDs with the four bytes, so there's a small chance that a system may have two cards that have the same UID. It's not guaranteed to be unique. Although it's not reliable and it has been cracked, the data on the card is encrypted, and we have to use a key when we are communicating with it. In the RFID tag, the 1K data space is divided up into sectors, blocks, and bytes within the block. Each sector has encryption keys and some bits that we can read and write, and there's a manufacturer block containing the NUID of this card. So with an Arduino library, we can talk to this card, read the NUID to see which tag it is, and we can optionally write to or read from any of these access bits. By default, the keys in these tags are all F, and that's what our Arduino library assumes when talking to the card and authenticating. This is the library we're using for the MFRC522 reader. Looking at some of the documentation for the library on GitHub, there's a summary of a lot of the things we just looked at, so I'll put links to everything below. And here's the overall project setup that I'm using. We don't need all of this to get the RFID reader up and running, but here's what I'm doing. I'm plugged into USB and I'm using serial monitor, and at the same time I'm using a 16x2 I2C interfaced LCD display. So I'm powering this module from 5 volts and ground, and connecting up to I2C. In order to indicate access granted or denied, I have a two-pin LED that has red and green in it. So I've got this connected up to a couple of GPIO through a resistor, and depending if I set these high or low, low or high, I can change the color. 
or set them both identical and the LED is off. The RFID reader module is powered from 3.3 volts, is connected to the common ground, and then we have the SPI related signals going to the standard Arduino SPI pins. Since the inputs on this 3.3 volt module are not 5 volt tolerant, any signals that are coming out of Arduino into the reader are going to a voltage divider with a 680 ohm and 1k resistor. So when the Arduino is giving 5 volts, we're actually getting about 3 volts, and when it gives ground, we get ground. The other signal is an input to Arduino, and there's no need to level shift that because the logic high output on this 3.3 volt output is enough to trigger the 5 volt input, at least in my setup. And this other network right here is for audio out on digital pin 3. I'm using this audio output with the talkie library for voice synthesis and with a tone generating library. So the talkie library recommends this network of resistors and capacitors just the way the library works. Over on GitHub for the talkie library, here's the output filter circuit I'm using, and it does seem to avoid the clicks. At least it greatly minimizes them. But the signal is so weak we actually need an amplifier with a speaker, so I'm plugging this into a battery-powered little amplifier. We've looked at the Talkie library in a project video before, so I'll link to that. And I'm also using this timer-free tone library. I want to generate a few tones, but the normal Arduino tone library uses timers, and Talkie interferes with that, so this timer-free tone library worked perfectly fine for what I'm doing right now. And whether I'm generating speech with Talkie or a tone with the timer-free library, I'm sending all audio out on pin 3, and it all works fine with this filter and the amplified speaker I'm using. So let's take a look at a few of the library examples for the RFID reader, then get all the rest of these peripherals up and running in a little system. Here's the overall setup with the tag reader. I have some tags and cards on standby, the LCD, the UNO with the red-green LED right here, and then the resistor capacitor audio circuit going out to a powered amplifier. To get started, I'm just going to use the reader alone and the serial monitor and try some of the demo sketches that come with the library. There's a bunch of example sketches. I'm going to try the one for dumping info out of the card as well as reading and writing personal data. When I use the dump info sketch, the serial monitor shows that we are waiting to scan a device to see what type it is, what its unique ID is, and what the data blocks look like. So I'll take a tag and lay it there long enough for it to read all the info. So down here, these four bytes, 30, 38, 16, A3, if we scroll back up, those bytes are the UID for this tag. And the sketch could also verify it's a MyFair device, 1K size. So we have all of this user data available here. I already have another tag that I've put some user data in. So if we look at that, we're going to see the data here starts to fill in. So here's a unique UID again, and some user data written into this tag. Now I uploaded the demo sketch for writing personal data. So if I put a tag on here, this sketch is configured to write a last name and first name, so it detected a card, and it's waiting for me to enter somebody's last name. So we'll write a last name and end it with hashtag, send this, and it successfully wrote. Now it wants the first name, success. So now this tag has some custom data that we can read back in another sketch. Now I've uploaded the other sketch for reading personal data out of a tag, and it's waiting. So I'll put the one I just configured on there. And it detected the tag, identified it's a valid type, and it's printing out the first and last name. 
So I want to take this and put it to use in my own little demo sketch. Here's a little demo sketch I put together using some snippets from the RFID library to be able to read in various cards. Then I'm using the LCD and the serial monitor to print out the results. And I have configured five ID tags, four tags and one card. So I have the UIDs in this sketch. And if any of those five UIDs are read, it will grant access. If not, it will deny access. So this could be used to grant access to a door lock, for example. And whether access is granted or not, the result will go out on the serial monitor, an LCD display, and there's going to be audio indicators with a little tone and some synthesized speech. So I'm using the talkie library for the speech, which we've covered before. And to generate a tone, since the talkie library is using timers, the normal Arduino tone command wasn't working, so I got this timer-free tone library, and that allows me to generate tones. We start out initializing the LCD display, which is using the I squared C expander, and we've covered this before as well. Here's where we start to use the RFID library, and here's five arrays to store the NUID for five tags that I've configured and I want to have access granted. If any tag does not contain one of these NUIDs, access is denied. These are the two vocabulary libraries I'm using with the talkie library to generate speech. These contain the words that I wanted to use. And the talkie library is going to use pin 3 as an audio output, so when I configured the timer-free tone generator, I also used pin 3 for the audio output there. And I have a two-pin bi-directional LED with red and green in it, so I decided to put this directly on two GPIO pins, that way by setting one high and the other low, and vice versa, I can make the LED green or red, and if I set both pins the same, the LED is off. So we'll quickly go through the sketch, we're not going to go in depth on anything that we've covered in the past, like LCD or the talkie library. So we initialize the RFID reader. Then in the loop, we are constantly checking if there's a card detected, and if so, have we successfully read the NUID out of it? If not, we just start the loop again. Once we've successfully read a card, we start out with access not being granted, and later we will grant access if required. So we go in and read the info out of the card and make sure it's a valid card. And once we know the NUID of that card, we compare it against those five hard-coded cards. If the card we read is one of the ones that are valid, we grant access. Now, if access has not been granted, we print out the access denied message, turn the LED red, and print out the info on the LCD and serial monitor. Then we generate an access denied tone, and we get the voice synthesizer to say, you have no clearance. And we're pretty much done now that we've read the card and decided this user does not have access. If they do have access, similarly we notify that access is granted, turn the LED green, and now we go in and read the custom user data that I assigned earlier. And I did that using the demo sketch with the library where I can write a first name and last name, but I'm only using the first name. I go in and try to read the name out of the card, and then I print it out in the serial monitor and on the LCD as a welcome message. And I play an access granted tone and give a voice greeting saying good morning. And whether access was granted or not, either way we want to turn off the LED next, Reset the message on the LCD display so that we are waiting to scan a new tag, and we're done. With the demo sketch uploaded and ready to run, first I'll scan a few tags that are not authorized, then I'll scan a bunch that are authorized, and we can see what happens. And the LED right here, I think the current limit resistor is too high, so the LED is not very bright, but it does work. You have no clearance. You have no clearance. Good morning. 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.